This is the online service of St. Rose of Lima Parish, located in Newtown, Connecticut. Good evening. Welcome for the celebration of the Last Supper of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. Before we offer this worship, we acknowledge our own unworthiness to be in the presence of the Lord, acknowledge our own sinfulness, our failures, our mistakes, our waywardness, and ask God to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask this to me in the virtue of all the angels and saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it from the first month, uh, uh, you shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small, for a whole lamb. It shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all of your generations shall shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 800, Our Blessing Cup. Our Blessing Cup is a communion with the blood of Christ.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on, he reclined at table again. He said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord.
remembrance and living the remembrance is at the very heart of what we celebrate this hour. We have come to celebrate this remembrance of what the Lord had done. The Lord's institution of the Eucharist and the Lord's institution of the ministerial priesthood. We remember what the Lord had told us. We remember today and make an effort to live that remembrance in our life every day. And the Lord said, this is how I want to be remembered. And therefore, do this in memory of me. My brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the Lord is with his apostles at the close of his life. Like some of the elders in our families, when they feel that they have come to the end of their life, they call their children and give a last discourse. And the Lord is seated. Tells the apostles, you have seen what I have done. I have given you an example. I have become a model for you. Remember that. Go and do in your lives. We remember that today. And we relive day by day what the Lord had told us and what the Lord had done. A little while later, as he was speaking, he knelt down. God the Almighty was on his knees in front of his apostles, which the apostles could not understand. And not only knees, but he was washing the feet of his own apostles, which St. Peter could not accept it. Lord, I do not want to be a part of it. I would not love you. God, the great Almighty, is on his knees, humbling himself, touching the feet of his apostles, washing their feet thus lowering himself, humbling himself. And the very same Lord tells the apostles, you have seen, you have called me master and Lord. Yes, I am. But do this. Go, do this. And what was that? The Lord also told them, as he was kneeling down, this I'm giving. I'm breaking myself. I'm giving you my body. I'm giving you my blood because I love you. Nothing else. Because I love you, I'm doing this for you. The apostles could not take it and they were at a loss. The institution of the Eucharist. The Eucharist, a symbol of love a symbol of the Lord's presence that he instituted, that we remember day after day, bringing the presence of the Lord at the altar, bringing the presence of the Lord to the people outside, bringing the presence of the Lord to the world, bringing the presence of the Lord to those people who do not want God today. Bringing the presence of the Lord to the sick and the disabled. Bringing the presence of God to everyone who is longing, who is in need of God. Bringing the presence of God even to those who reject it. Presence of bringing the presence of God to everyone in the world. And that is the ministerial priesthood. And who is a priest then, my brothers and sisters? Last two years, if you remember, the first year I was talking to you, reflecting together 
on the service of the priesthood. The last year, we were reflecting together. We were thinking about it. We were meditating on the gospel of the Eucharist, how the Eucharist, how the Lord breaks himself and how the priest breaks himself. And this year, we will see who the priest is and how he becomes a priest, how he becomes a sign and symbol of God's presence in this world, how he becomes a service-minded priest, one who is at the service of the Lord. <laughs> he is very much accepting what I am saying. Yes. <laughs> and he's clapping for himself there. Now, who is a priest? A priest is the most priest. A priest. When he washes the emotional and spiritual and psychological feet of those people who come to him with dirt and dust. The priest is most a priest. When he stands for the honor of God. When he would not compromise the word of God. When he would not compromise the values of God. When he would not compromise his faith so as to please anyone. A priest is the most a priest. Leaving aside his own preferences. Leaving aside his own personal conveniences and comforts. Receive those people who come to look for him. Come to look for his help. Come to look for his guidance. A priest is a priest when he accepts in silence. When he accepts in silence the challenges. The problems that he faces. The failures that he comes through. The personal weaknesses. The personal encounters. Sometimes the crisis of faith. The criticisms of the people. The rejection by the people. The humiliation from the people. And turns all of them into possibilities. Into opportunities. To grow in faith. And more trust in God. And then he becomes a priest. A priest is the most in a time when he makes an effort to be holy day by day. In spite of his problems. In spite of his weaknesses. In spite of his sinfulness. A priest is a priest finally, my brothers and sisters. When he proclaims the word of God. When he relives every day at the altar. Bringing the presence of the Lord for everyone. For himself and for the whole world. Then he becomes a real priest. Yes, priest. And what about the people of God? It is the duty of the people of God, my brothers and sisters, is to pray for your priests. It is the duty and obligation of the people of God, as a community of people, is to pray and love your priests. It is the people, it is the duty of the people of God, the community of God, the children of God, is not only to praise, not only to love, but also to accept them as human beings. As weak beings. As frail beings. And give them a lot of strength and concern and stand by them. It is a duty and responsibility and obligation of the people of God. Is to pray. Pray that the priests who are called by God. To make an effort to be faithful to their calling. To their vocation. To their priesthood. It is the duty of the people of God is to be with 
priests whom they serve. Whom they serve. It is a duty and obligation of the people of God is to share the word of God with everyone. As they receive the word of God proclaimed, take the word of God to the others. It is the duty of the people of God is to share bread together with the priests of the altar. It is the duty of the people of God to be the sign and symbol of God's presence in the world as you meet, as you encounter numerous people at your level, in offices, at home, or marketplaces, or anywhere. And that we remember today. The Lord said, do this in memory of me. It's not only the ritual celebration of the Eucharist, but living that Eucharist in our life day by day. And therefore, the people of God are the living Eucharist out in the world, bringing God to those people who need him. As we remember today, my brothers and sisters, what the Lord had done for us, let us serve the humanity in our own way, in our limited way, in the way that God is asking each one of us to do. We ask God's strength and courage that we please be holy, holy and genuinely human, genuinely human who can care for those people who come to him. Genuinely human who can understand people who come to him. Genuinely human to reach out to those in need. And therefore, we ask the Lord to be with us tonight and to walk with the Lord tonight and tomorrow so that we may fully participate in his passion and death.
Let's stand for the prayer of the faithful. <clears throat> the example of Jesus shows us how to serve others in our deeds and in our prayers. For God's church throughout the world, as we seek to serve others inspired by the example of Jesus himself, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for peace in the Holy Land, the birthplace of our faith, and for peace throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For those who have been ordained to the priesthood, that they may be blessed as they serve the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve the poor, the homeless, and the dying, that God will bless their work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that as we commemorate the first Eucharist celebrated by Christ and his friends, we experience a renewed appreciation for the gift of the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our St. Rose parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish, especially those listed in our prayer intention book, that God grants them his healing presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died.
that they rest in the eternal peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pause in silence as we add our own intentions. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Creator God, source of the bread and wine we offer, hear and grant the prayers we bring to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I am here all alone Praying to you on my knees Not my will, but your own May this cup be taken from me Yet I know the time has come The final sacrifice Your only son Help the shepherd be a lamb The sacrifice for mortal man Help the shepherd be a lamb that must be slain to bring life once again. How can I bear the sins of all? Father, will you intercede? Must this sacrifice be me? Once again I hear my call. I can feel the agony. The weight of all the sin that's placed on me. Sacrifice for mortal man. Help the shepherd be a lamb that must be slain to bring life.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat this flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood, that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
celebrating the most sacred night on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessed, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmus and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal termination and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, be pleased, O God, we pray to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks. He said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this heartless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice as spotless victim. In a humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant 
grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who build sinners, help in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us the Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The of our power and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other this sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only see the word of my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you. 